Hey class, it's uh, Nick, and uh, I've got a brief tutorial for you on using SketchUp to do shadow studies um, of our rhinoceros models. Now there are ways to do uh, shadow studies in Rhino using tools like V-Ray and uh, Maxwell, but uh, they're a little bit too high powered uh, for what we need. Uh, those are going to produce uh, renderings that do take into account the angle and the um, the sun's you know like location, but uh, they're going to also show us the balances of the sun, the like indirect light, um, and they also take time to render. They're not really uh, real time like representations that we can kind of play with, uh, and uh, that's the advantage of the tool like SketchUp. So sometimes we have to get out of the programs that we have and and, and put our models into other programs. Um, it's really good just to know that there are these other tools out there uh, that might do one or two jobs really well uh, that our, our regular tools can't do. So it's not good just to stay in tools like Rhino uh, and even tools like Revit like all the time. Sometimes you need to take a model and feed it to something else. And in this case, again, the tool for the job is SketchUp. So I've got my uh, rhinoceros model here and it's ready to go. Um, I've got my I've got my building that I modeled. I've got the site, the high line, all that stuff. Everything's divided onto layers. Um, quick quick thing to note: um, you can certainly use the different. Uh, you know, um, you can have things separated by color uh, in your Rhino model on layers, but that won't uh, actually come in when you export it to uh, SketchUp. The other thing is, if you have any materials on your model for some reason, uh, you definitely want to get rid of those. You want to go ahead and right click on the material thing and click remove material. Uh, SketchUp doesn't like those materials uh, when it tries to render the uh, shadows. Okay, There's other ways around it, but I don't want to get into that like right now because it's too complex. Just make sure that your model is pretty much free of that stuff. Uh, and then you're ready to export. So once you've got your building in, everything's turned on, um, you can go ahead and go to File, and just say Save As. And you can uh, select the SketchUp model type. Go ahead, and uh, it doesn't really matter whether you export planar regions as polygons or not. It's fine. That's a default. Save your file. It's going to save that. Go ahead and open up SketchUp. You want to make sure that your template, I mean, for the sake of aesthetics and for your sanity, uh, make sure that your template that you're using is the architectural design template with feet and inches. Uh, it's nice and gray doesn't have this goofy kind of ground. Um, everything has these little figures, that's fine. So when you open up your file, if it's the first time you've opened up SketchUp, it'll ask you what template you want. I would go ahead and do architectural design. You definitely want to do it with feet and inches. Um, that's going to that's gonna pop in right. Um, and of course your model you know, needs to be to scale. I think that should be self-explanatory uh, by this point. Otherwise your light's not going to uh, work quite right. Quite right. Then you just go ahead and you open up that file uh, that you made in SketchUp, and uh, something is messed up. Fine, you can say fix now. Yeah, and if there's anything in there, it, it might uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, all right, so there's your model, right? It's already it's in SketchUp. Uh, you can use the um, the orbit navigation here. You just click on it. You can you can rotate around it. Make sure everything's in there. Huh, you know, weird. You know, a little gap here. That's fine. You could fix that stuff in Rhino if you see if you see problems with your model. Um, yeah, it looks like there's a gap in there too. That kind of stuff happens. That's fine. Um, you're really just interested in the in the shadow study for now. Right now, it's just so that you understand like what the effects of different moves are going to be on your massing um, with respect to different times of day, different times of year. Later on, we'll talk about how to actually use these to create representations. But right now, we're only interested in this as a study model. Um, one thing, real quick. Let's go to layers. Uh, I hate this default SketchUp. This is shows you the inside and the outside of materials. And purple and uh, yellow is kind of the outside. Uh, I, I don't like that. So um, let's go ahead and select everything. Control A. Go into your uh, materials palette here. Um, you can go in and um, go to the named colors uh, panel here. So they go under materials. And I go to uh, colors named. Just make everything ooh, snow. I don't know. Make everything white. You click the paint bucket. Okay, everything's gonna be, gonna be white. That's nice. Uh, and then let's take our model. So to make it make that really easy, let's just go ahead and turn off like everything that we can here. There's always like this like layer that has uh, lines on it. Uh, when you export it from Rhino, you just turn that off for now. We'll go ahead and um, select everything. Control A again. Go back to materials. Make it whatever you want. I'm going to give it a nice like, robin's egg 
Steel blue, very good. I like that. Um, you'll notice things like uh, lines kind of come in on their own, so these are just faces here. But the lines actually tend to come in. So if you have any any lines left over, they might come in. Um, you can delete those. Actually, it doesn't like that. Um, forget I said that. <laughs> Go ahead and just keep it the way it is for now. Uh, then you turn back on those layers, and then that way it just distinguishes like your model from everything else, which is going to kind of help you uh, make sense of it. All right. So we've got our model. We've got it uh, slightly colored just to help us understand again, like what's ours and what's the other model. You may see some weird artifacts and things. That's kind of the process of of taking something from SketchUp. Again, not really too worried about that as long as we get our shadows. So. Um, before we even get to shadows, though, really quick, we have to make sure that we actually have the right location. Remember, the longitude and latitude of our site are going to help us determine the sun angle for the time of day and for the time of year. In order to get that, we're going to go into geolocation. We're going to add a location. The new version of SketchUp is kind of nice because you can actually type in the address and you can search for it. And I'm actually already pretty close to the site. If you're anywhere near it, you're fine. It doesn't have to be like exact. It's not, you know, rocket science or anything. So we're just going to grab that region. Once it does that, what it ends up doing is it kind of, it, it tries to do the site as an underlay. Uh, it's it's gross. I don't like that. So we're going to go ahead and go to geolocation. Just say, uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and say clear location. Uh, actually, no, take that back. Actually, what we can do is we can go up to uh, uh, model info, sorry. And, um, Go to geolocation, and uh, we can just say a clear location. And then if we say set manual, it's actually going to be in there already. So we just click OK. That's just gonna that that just removes that image. We don't we don't want that image in there. Um, it's not like critical, but I don't I don't like that very much. Um, uh, it gets in the way of this. So got our model. Uh, now we go into window shadows. Um, UTC negative five, right? So that's the universal time. Um, we're five hours uh, from that, um, which is right for New York City. That's a that's a check that we have the right geolocation. Um, you're lucky uh, in that your model is actually oriented correctly um, already. If we go to the top view, you can see it's it's actually uh, north is true up. I mean, uh, uh, true north is actually straight up and down. Um, if we look at that in Google, we could like verify that. So we actually don't need to rotate the model um, at all from Rhino or, or even in SketchUp to get the right sun angle. That's very critical. So we have the right geolocation. North is up. Uh, and uh, then we just basically check the box that says show shadows. And it's a use sun for shading. It's fine. You really don't need to check you know, anything else here. You can experiment with like you know making the ground lighter or darker if it's better for your aesthetic sensibility, making the shadows darker. Um, I kind of like them really dark. Um, and then basically just navigating your model, you can find a view that you like, or views you like. And you can go into the shadows palette here and look at different times of day. Well, as you guys know from uh, John Nelson's class, you know, there are different times of year, times of day that are very important. One is the, uh, the summer solstice. Uh, and so, you know, we want to look at the building, you know, probably at nine something in the morning, right? towards you know towards noon and then again in the late afternoon or, you know so you can see how, how how actually different that is along the high line along the face of our building um, you can see though that we do end up with some some southern exposure a lot of the day at this time of year now switch to a different time of year let's go you know you go to winter solstice right it might be the worst day of the year um, you know, December 21st and look at that again. So again, looking at it at nine, let's say, and at noon, and at three, quite a bit less exposure. Okay. Um, we can go back and we can do one of the equinoxes. So we can maybe say September. And I'm, I'm kind of fudging this. You could actually get these a little bit better, but um, so noon, three o'clock and about nine o'clock. So, 
some some pretty de- you know no not a lot of direct shadow on it for a lot of the year except for when we really get into the winter months and that's the kind of study you want to do and of course you want to look at it for those you know basically those nine times a year will sort of give you um, a good bounded range um, you want to look at your building you know certainly look at it like on the high line all right you could certainly you could certainly zoom in I would create a camera in SketchUp to help you out. Unfortunately, you can't export cameras directly from Rhino to SketchUp. Um, it just doesn't really work very well right now. Um, I may come up with a better method for that later, but for now, just um, you can create some cameras in SketchUp that you can use. Um, but you want to look at the different designs you have from these different times, and you want to study the uh, um, effects of the sun on it, right? So in terms of in terms of the exposure that you're getting, you know, on certain sides of the building, in terms of the amount of light that you're building. Is, is allowing or or not allowing out of the high line through through the virtue of, of, of the shadows that it casts okay and you can do you can do screen caps from sketchup um, you can you can you can export oops wrong button there you can export uh, 2d graphic okay in order to get the images out that you want and that's it. So for now, I'm just using it as a study tool. I encourage everybody to experiment with this. Um, get to know SketchUp a little bit better if you haven't. Uh, learn how to navigate it. Um, learn how learn how the shadows work. Um, and use that as a way to, to think about your building in a little bit more analytical way than we've been doing um, with, our, with our diagrammatic studies. All right. If you have any questions, uh, let us know. I'll see you guys uh, later this week.